Well, Texas Governor Greg Abbott initially blamed the massive power failure on renewable energy sources, but experts disputed that claim. Abbott and other officials are facing heated questions about those misleading statements. Scientists are confident uh, that climate change is a big factor in some of the extreme weather we're seeing. Most any Texan will tell you this does happen, but it's not normal. It was a rare treat until it became clear that the state was wholly unprepared for this kind of weather. Now, some say a warming climate may have contributed to the extreme cold across the U.S. last week. And what made this last storm so historic is that cold air plunged further south than normal, about 4,000 miles further south from near the North Pole. And these extreme weather events aren't just happening in the U.S. Take a look at this. These are camels on Saturday in a blizzard in Saudi Arabia. Let's talk more about all of this with Catherine Hayhoe. She's an atmospheric scientist and director of the Climate Science Center at Texas Tech University. Great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. I really do want you to unpack for us why warming Arctic, uh, a warming Arctic has an impact in Texas. Well, first of all, in Texas, about every 10 years, there is a very severe cold wave with ice and snow that knocks out the power. It happened in 1989, there was a very big one. In 2011, there was a very large one. And after every single one of these winter storm events, there was a commission. There were findings saying that the power grid was not prepared, the gas plants were not prepared, the gas lines were not prepared, and they really should be winterized as they are winterized in other places further north. But each time those recommendations were ignored. So the storm that happened in Texas this past week, it was not unprecedented and it was not something that has not happened before. Now, as the world warms, we know that our weather is getting weirder. We know that heat waves are becoming more intense and more frequent. We know that wildfires are burning greater area from California to Alaska to Australia. We know that hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones are getting stronger and more damaging. We know that our really expensive weather and climate events are getting worse. And we know that today we are already woefully unprepared for those changes as this week has just showed us. It certainly has, but just explain to us what played out in terms of the atmosphere that led to these catastrophic scenes we saw in Texas. We get these terrible cold waves in Texas when there is an outbreak of cold Arctic air that makes it all the way down to Texas. And this does happen on a fairly regular basis. Not all the time, but enough that if you've lived here a while like I have, you've experienced it a few times. Here's the connection to climate. The jet stream is powered by the temperature difference between the Arctic and the mid-latitudes. But the Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. And in fact, this past week, some parts of the Arctic were over 15 degrees Celsius, almost 25 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer than they would be normally at this time of year. So the jet stream slows down and begins to meander. And scientists are not sure yet. This is still at the cutting edge of scientific research. We don't have a long enough satellite record to be sure, but there's some indication that as the Arctic warms much faster than the rest of the world, even though our winters are getting warmer, which they are, we could still be seeing these cold air outbreaks happening. So you would have warm, 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 cold, warm, 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 cold, uh, as the world continues to get warmer. So you call it global weirding, I understand, uh, which is a pretty good description because it has been wacky weather. Uh, what, what, what should folks do about it? Because this is about mitigation, it's about adaptation. I think somebody said it's also about suffering, but it's a balance of how all of us are going to manage this global weird weather in the years or weeks or months ahead. Well, to complete the quote, we have these three choices, mitigation, adaptation, or suffering, and the more mitigation we do, which means the more carbon emissions we reduce, the less adaptation is required and the less suffering there will be. Adaptation means to look ahead down the road and see what's happening. We have to prepare for 500 year flood events to be happening every three years as they have in some parts of Houston. We have to prepare for hurricanes to be capable of dropping 50 inches of rain as Hurricane Harvey did three years ago. The Midwest was in record flood condition just two years ago. It's hard to remember that far back. 
and we are seeing weather records broken all around the world, as they normally do, both hot and cold, but our high temperature records are now being broken much more frequently. So we cannot only prepare based on the past, we must also prepare based on how things are changing so that when we hit them in the future, we'll be ready. So I know that you, you advise cities and you advise city managers, engineers, ecologists about these scenarios. If you look at the globe, I mean, this is, this is the kind of expectations in terms of weather that we all need to prepare for. But what is clear from Texas is even knowing all of that, nothing was done. And then on top of it, we're hearing all these reports of folks being charged crazy prices for their electrical bills. So it's ordinary folks who are then going to have to pay for all the ill preparedness of, of uh, the infrastructure um, of, of cities. What do you make about that? How, how, how can any of us who are listening to you now try and fathom and put this into our own daily lives in terms of preparation? You are absolutely right. That is what is happening. So those who reap the benefits of failing to prepare to adequately winterize their equipment because it would cost more up front, they are not the ones paying the greatest price. As with any disaster, the poorest people, those living below the poverty line, those already vulnerable because of health conditions or other reasons, those are the people who are most affected by these disasters. And as climate changes, we see that they are also the ones who are most effective. Whether they live in a floodplain, because those are where the most affordable houses are, whether they're disproportionately affected by or exposed to air pollution, which a new study just found kills 8 million people around the world every year, air pollution from burning fossil fuels alone, the poorest and most vulnerable are the first to suffer. And that's why preparing is a job for all of us. Cities, water districts, counties, states, provinces, departments, federal and government agencies, businesses, churches, places of worship, schools, everybody has a role to play in looking around their community and saying, who is vulnerable and what could we do to prepare to help? Yeah, it's certainly a lesson. Uh, what happened in Texas could happen anywhere, um, mm -hmm. but our thoughts do go out to, to everybody. And you are there in Texas. How have you been, just before we go, quickly? I've been incredibly fortunate to have the power on, but our university has had rolling blackouts, and I have many colleagues and friends who have been in dire circumstances throughout the rest of the state this past week. Okay, well, our thoughts and, and much love to you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Catherine Hayhoe, the atmospheric scientist, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your expertise.